Captain America is known for throwing his shield around and making it bounce against all kinds of things like walls or people or even helicopters. And after watching the latest trailer of the new movie I got so inspired that I had to create this effect in Blender and then to show you how that is done. So let's get started. This video actually consists of two parts. So first of all I'm going to show you how I created this shield bouncing effect and later I want to give you a behind the scenes look on how I created those shots that you saw at the beginning of this video. But let's first create that shield bouncing effect. And to get started I actually pre-created this blender file over here which consists of the actual shield model of course and an empty and also the environment in which the shield is going to bounce around. So if you go to the link in the description you can download that and we can get started. So that shield bouncing effect we are going to create that 100% in geometry nodes. So that geometry node system that we're going to create we are going to create that on this shield. So if we take this shield and click on plus over here to create a new geometry node, we can name this bounce effect or something like that. And the first thing that we want to do is make it that the shield travels from the position that it is now to the position of this target empty. So to do this, we will need to simulate the movement of this shield. So to do that, we're going to do a simulation zone right over there, connect it like this. And in order to move something with the simulation zone, we're going to need a set position node. And now if you set the Z axis, for example, on point one, you will see that the shield starts going up. However, that's not really what we want now. We want that this shield goes towards this empty. So what we will need to do is create an attribute, an attribute that is called velocity. And this velocity should be the direction from the shield to this empty. So if we do a store named attribute node, which we set on a vector because the velocity is a vector. And to create the vector that goes from here to here, we can take the original position of this shield by doing a position node and then also take the position of this target empty by dragging in the target empty just like this. And now we have the location of that empty. And what we want to do is we want to subtract the original position from the target position. So if we do a vector math node, which we set on subtract, we want to subtract from the location of the target. We want to subtract the original position. And then if you connect that like so, then you will see that doesn't really work yet. Of course, this doesn't really work because this attribute is not doing anything with the set position. So if you do a named attribute node, which we set on val, then you can connect that like so. And then you will see it is going very fast into some direction, which is not really good. First thing that we need to do is set this to relative. Let's see what that does. Yeah, that doesn't really change it. Well, a couple of things that we need to fix. You see that the shield is becoming very big right over there. And the reason for that is at the moment, this set position node is affecting each individual vertice on the shield. And that actually allows the shield to deform. And that's not really what we want. We want that the shield stays in one shape so that it doesn't become bigger. And to do this, we can actually convert this shield into an instance. So if you connect it like so, and then also set over here the store named attribute from point to instance, that works a lot better, right? It is actually going into that direction. However, it's going way too fast. At the moment, the speed of the shield is dependent on the distance between the empty and the actual shield. Oh, and you also see I now clicked on the empty and everything is gone. If you do not want that, if you want that, if you click on the empty, the geometry node is still there you can click on this pin icon over here. Now you can just click on the empty. So as I was saying, the velocity of the shield is now dependent on the distance between the empty and the beginning position. But we don't want that. We want that to be independent. So if we do a vector math node and we set it to normalize, we are normalizing the distance between the empty and the shield so that we have easier control over it. Because if we now do a vector math node, which we set on scale and we scale this down by 0.1, for example, then you will see it goes a lot slower, but it does go into that direction. But let's set this back on one so that we can maybe change it later, of course. Okay, cool. We have the beginning velocity for our shield. However, there are still three things that we want to do for the velocity of this thing, which is adding in gravity so that the shield can actually go down and also adding in damping so that the shield slowly slows down over time. And also, of course, adding in that bouncing effect. And those things we are going to do inside of the simulation zone because we want to update this velocity vector over time. 
time. So if we take this store named attribute, we can take it over here. And now if you take this named attribute, shift D it over here and connect it like this. Now we're basically saying, okay, the new velocity is the same as the old velocity, but we want to update this over time, of course, by adding in some gravity. So if we do a vector math node, which we set on subtract, we can subtract 0 0.01 on the Z axis over time. And then you will see we are adding in gravity. Yes, it goes down over there. Now let's go to the second thing, which is damping. So let's make it that over time, the shield slows down so that there's like air friction or something like that. So if we do another vector math node, which we set on scale, if you now set the scaling on 0.9, for example, every new frame, the velocity gets scaled down by 0.9. So it gets slower. So let's see. Yes, that looks pretty good. It's a bit too extreme, I think. So let's set it on 0.98 for now. So let's see. Yeah, that's a little bit better. So, okay, the third thing that we wanted to do was adding in that bounce effect, right? That's actually the whole reason you're watching this video. So what we need to do to get that bouncing effect is we want to refer to our collision parts over here in geometry nodes. And as you can see, I created a collection with the collision objects in it. In at the moment, it's only the walls, of course, but later you can add in more objects. But if we drag that in right over there, then we can set this on relative and separate children and now as you can see these are still instances but we don't want that we want to have the actual geometry of it so let's do a realize instances node and we're good to go okay what we want to do is we want that if the shield is close to a face like this for example then it should change direction so we first want to have the distance between the walls and the shield and we can get that with a geometry proximity node which we set over here and we can keep this on faces and over here we have the distance and then we can say with a compare node then we can say okay if the distance is less than 0.5 then it should deflect from the wall however you would think why do we take 0.5 why not any other number or a smaller number well what i did is is the diameter of this shield is exactly one. So the radius of this is 0 0.5. So if this distance is less than 0 0.5, that has to mean that it is intersecting with it. So, okay, let's leave this for now. We're going to use that later because what we want to do now is actually calculate what should the new vector be when it actually touches it. And the new vector should be, okay, it goes like this and then it hits the wall and then it should be deflected like this. And the way we're going to do this is by taking the normal direction of that face that it's touching and to get this we can do a sample nearest surface node because this node can actually give us information about the face that is closest to the shield and we want to get the normal direction of that so let's set this to vector because the normal is a vector and let's add in a normal node to connect it like this now we want to use this value this normal value to change the velocity vector so let's do a mix vector node. And with this, we can say, okay, if the distance is lower than 0.5, then it should do the changed direction. And otherwise the velocity should just stay the same, of course. And then we can connect this mix node with the rest of the gravity and the damping. Now if we press play, yeah, you see, okay, that kind of already looks good. However, it is now just deflecting the normal direction of it and not the actual deflection that it should have. And to get that, to calculate that, it's actually quite simple. You can do a vector math node, which we set on reflect. And what we want to do is we want to reflect the original velocity from the normal direction. And then you will see that works perfectly fine. And we have a perfect looking shield bouncing effect. Really cool. However, before we continue, I do want to tell you something very quickly. Because I can completely understand if you are looking at these notes and you're thinking, oh my God, what is all of this? I have no idea what I'm looking at. How am I ever going to learn all these notes? I wish there was just some place in which I can just learn every single note in geometry notes in a very easy and chill way well then i have good news for you because i released the big notebook it's a book that explains every single note in geometry notes in a very easy and chill way and it starts from the very basics of geometry notes and slowly progresses towards more advanced techniques the book is available on my gumroad and if you use the code shield 
you will get 25% off of your purchase. This discount code is valid until the 5th of March, so be sure to get your copy of the Big Notebook today. And with that being said, let's continue the tutorial. There are actually two more things that I want to do to finish this. The first thing is, of course, to make the shield point towards the direction that it should go, because now it's just going horizontally and that doesn't really look good. So to do this, we want to go after the simulation zone. And if we add in a rotate instances node, then we can change the rotation of our shield. And we want to make this rotation dependent on the velocity of the shield. So if we take this named attribute, shift D it over here, if we connect it like so, that's not really pointing into the right direction. So if you do an align Euler to vector node, which you connect like so, then you will see, okay, it is kind of doing it, but we want it to go on the Y axis. Then you will see it is doing it in a perfect way. And you will see if you put it over here, then it also works. Yeah, perfect. And you can even make it go to the ground, for example, like so, so, so. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. And then to really finish off this shield bouncing effect, I want to make it that the shield is spinning in the air, so to say. And to really see that effect, we can go into material preview mode. And if we press play, you will see, yeah, the shield is not really spinning. But an easy way to make it spin is to actually do a rotate rotation node right over here. If you set this on the local axis and if you change the Z axis then, then you will see the Z axis is the right axis that we want to rotate. And this Z axis, we also want that to be dependent on this velocity vector because we want that the faster the shield goes, the faster it spins around, so to say. So what we can do is a vector math node and then we want to take the length of this velocity vector and we want this to be this Z rotation. So to have control over the separate XYZ sockets over here, you can do a combined Bind XYZ node, connect it like this, and connect the length with the Z. And then, okay, if you press play, it's it's still a bit hard to see because the thing is moving. But if we for now turn off the set position by pressing M, then you will see, okay, it is kind of rotating, but it goes a bit too slow. So let's make it a little bit stronger with a math node. If we set this on multiply and we multiply this by 30, for example, then you will see it starts spinning around and slowly stops. So now we can turn on the set position again and to be honest the next thing that we need to do is just play just play around with your shield bouncing effect in blender oh and another cool thing is you can just add in another object like a monkey or something like that just place it in your scene like so for example and just press m and put it into the collision collection and then if you point the shield into that direction you will see it bounces off it so if we see yeah maybe a different angle something like so and you see yeah that works perfectly fine to me and i think that looks really cool so now that we have created this effect let me give you a behind the scenes look on how i created those shots that i created in the beginning of this video the first shot that i want to have a look at is the second shot of the introduction video because if we press play you will see it looks like that we are moving very fast however we are actually standing still because if we go out of the camera you will see and i go over here in into solid view mode then you will see if i press play yeah nothing is moving at all right i made use of a really cool trick because over here as you can see it's just a couple of planes that you see over here and these planes they have a very simple noise textures that are squeezed and then moved very quickly over the plane and that in combination with a very shaky camera movement makes it that it looks like we are moving very fast over here, which I think is really cool. Oh yeah, you see that I can make the shield stop at that moment. The way I did that is if we take a look at the geometry notes for this, uh, the only thing that I added is this part. So I say over here, okay, after 10 frames of the animation, it should start slowing down the shield a lot so that it stays down over here. And then it's a little bit tweaking on when it is standing still, of course. Okay, that's the first shot that I wanna have a look at. The second shot is going to be this one. Well, this one I actually had a lot of fun because it actually required me to have uh, rigid body simulations, which is always very interesting because if we press play, you will see, boom, it goes like this. And then when I created this effect you see uh, at first i only had the rocks right the the breaking part of the pillar going out but then i was like yeah that doesn't really look cool enough uh, i want to have some more impact on this you know so i actually took some inspiration from this blended tutorial i'll put it in the link in the description to create this 
effect of impact so to say and it's very briefly it's very short but it makes the animation so much more cooler i think and of course if you look at it from this angle yeah then it doesn't really look good but in the camera view then it looks good and that's the most important thing in blender if it looks good in the camera perfectly fine and that already brings us to the end of this tutorial so i hope you liked this video again and if you did please give this video a thumbs up comment down below if you have any questions and if you don't want to miss out on any future videos i recommend subscribing to the channel oh and also be sure to check out the big notebook by going into the link in the description to get 25% off of your purchase and with that being said i see you in the next one